So a few people have asked me to do a video covering the relationship between Rory and Paris. And I thought, okay, well, that seems like a fun idea. And the way that I prepare for videos is that I go back and I rewatch the entire show, but I only watch the scenes that the character is in. So over the weekend, I watched all seven seasons of Gilmore Girls, but I only watched the scenes with Paris. And I have to say that I don't think I've ever been more mentally drained by a character before. Paris is a lot. And I still think that Paris is a sympathetic character, but my perception of her changed dramatically. And so I thought I would just sit down and give my unfiltered thoughts and the things that I noticed because I've seen the sentiment expressed that towards the end, Rory really wasn't a role model anymore. It was more so Paris and that Paris is more liked by the fandom than Rory. And I think that that comes down to the roles that the characters have within the show. Rory is the protagonist. We're supposed to put ourselves in Rory's shoes. And so when Rory messes up, we as the audience start to distance ourselves from that character and we judge the protagonist's actions more harshly. Whereas when a character is written to be a bad character, or I guess better way to put it, if they're the mean girl, they're their antagonist, when they do terrible things, that's expected of them. We look at them and we think, well, yeah, of course, this is Paris. They're supposed to be bad. So because Paris and Rory are written in different ways and because Paris is supposed to be the mean girl, the antagonist, she is perceived in a different light and her bad actions are viewed through a more comedic lens than Rory's actions are because, again, we are supposed to be identifying with Rory and relating to Rory. When it comes to Paris... And I believe that she's generally a sympathetic character because we learn a lot about her backstory. We don't know a ton, but we know that she comes from a home where her parents completely neglected her. You mean you never get to go months on end without seeing your parents, just getting an occasional postcard that doesn't even have a courtesy wish you were here written on it? That does suck. Don't let me stand in your way. Paris her parents are not at the Chilton graduation. They're not at the Yale graduation. Paris was raised by her nanny. Her parents' divorce causes a lot of problems at home, and her schoolwork even suffers because of it sometimes. I just can't focus lately. Things are so weird at my house. My dad finally figured out exactly how much it was going to cost him to divorce my mom, so now he's back. We only get one scene with her mom, and her mom is very terrible in that scene. So we realize that Paris didn't really have the best in life always. But that's not why I feel bad for Paris. I feel bad for Paris because she exists in her own personal hell. This is a character that has so much anxiety and paranoia and neuroticism that she self-sabotages herself. And she's so high strung that when you only watch her scenes, it just, it feels draining. And if I had to pick, if I had to be one character, Paris or Rory, I would have to say Rory because it must be so exhausting to exist in Paris's body. And a lot of the things that she does, she hurts herself in the process. So I don't want to neglect the fact that Paris is also a bully and I'm not going to excuse her bully behavior. But also at the same time, I recognize the fact that the damage that she does, she does it to herself as well. So the things that I really wanted to touch upon are the characteristics that really stood out to me. The first one is her need for control. And I think that's obvious to everybody. Paris always needs to be in control. When she's on a group project, she's in charge. She has trouble delegating a lot of the time. She needs to be the best. She needs to be in control of her surroundings. But the one thing that she doesn't really seem to have a control over are her own emotions. And she also has this undercurrent of paranoia that really stays with her until the end of the show, which I thought was interesting. I didn't pick up on before. So one example is the Chilton dance. Paris goes with her cousin and she finds out that Rory knows that she went with her cousin. Paris's initial reaction is to go on the defensive. She runs up to Rory and she starts questioning her and accusing her of the fact that Rory may have told other people. So she starts asking Rory, how many people have you told? She automatically assumes that Rory's out to get her, even though Rory has not given any indication that she would do such a thing. And because in that moment, Paris is so angry, she is yelling so loudly that the entire ballroom hears her. And so she reveals her own secret and she puts herself in a humiliating position because she's not self-aware in that particular moment. Her anger takes over. And the ironic thing is, is that in the next episode, when everyone is talking about Paris's parents' divorce, 
Paris then tells the entire school that Max Medina is seeing Lorelai, and she does this so that the heat is taken off of her. And this is kind of the kind of action that she would expect Rory to do, that Rory would go behind her back and attack her, even though that's the kind of action that Paris takes. Another example is when Paris finds out that Tristan only asked her out because Rory suggested it. And Paris gets so angry that she starts yelling at Rory in a classroom that's filled with other people. And maybe at this point, she doesn't care who hears it, but it feels like in that scene, her anger takes over and she can't control it. It's something that could have been handled privately, but because of her rage, that she feels the need to go on the defensive, on the attack. Another example of her paranoia is that in college, she has a dream that Rory is going for the religion beat. And in this dream, she, Rory cooked dinner for Doyle, and Paris is convinced that her dreams are telling her that Rory is going to go behind her back. So she's questioning Rory, she's trying to smell her hands, and Rory has to reassure her that, no, I don't want the religion beat. But it's just funny that after so many years of friendship, Paris still has this feeling that Rory is going to try to take over. Another example is when Paris kicks Rory out when Rory becomes the editor-in-chief. And when Paris kicks Rory out, her feeling is that Rory planned this all along. So even though they've been friends now for many years, they've already been living together, Paris still feels like Rory wants to take over and that she is going to go behind her back to do something. Even though after many years of friendship, Rory has never given Paris any sign that she shouldn't trust her. And that's sort of an undercurrent of their entire relationship. From the very beginning, Paris always feels like she's competing with Rory, even though Rory really never treats her as competition. And not because Rory thinks that she's superior, but because Rory's just focused on her own life, her own work. But from the very first moment that Paris meets Rory, she assumes that Rory wants to be number one in the school, that she's going to go out for the Franklin, that she wants to be valedictorian, and that ends up being the case, but Rory never set out to do those things. And so this feeling kind of lasts until the very end of the show in season seven. There's a point where Rory has to take time off class because Richard was in the hospital. He had a heart attack. So Paris gives her her notes and she blocks out sections of her notes. And Rory asks, oh, why are some sections blocked out? Paris explains it as, well, I'm going to give you what was shared with the public, but I'm not going to share with you my personal opinions on these notes because there could only be so many women at the top. There's one thing I learned in that first lecture is that there's not room for many women at the top. And it's just really interesting to see that after such a long time of this relationship that Paris still feels like she has to compete. And I know this. there's this I, feeling that Paris is a very loyal friend and she is a very loyal friend, but I don't think that Paris fully trusts Rory, even at the end, because even in season six, we see that Paris kicks Rory out and doesn't give her a chance to even explain herself. And in season seven, Paris is worried about even sharing her private thoughts on notes with someone who she considers to be her best friend. It almost feels like Paris always kind of keeps Rory in this weird bubble where they're close, but she keeps her at an arm's length. Another thing that I thought was interesting is that Paris can't handle rejection. And I'm not referring to Harvard. So there's a moment where Paris and Rory win their debate. And then Paris comes up to Rory and she wants to celebrate. Rory has plans with Christopher and Sherry and Lorelai. So she says that she can't come out. And automatically, Paris gets very irritated. And she gets very annoyed with the fact that Rory's busy. She almost assumes that Rory's making things up. That she just is saying no because she doesn't want to hang out with her, that Rory's making up an excuse. And it's just, it's interesting that Paris's initial reaction is just assume that she's being rejected because it's because of her and not because of external circumstances. And okay, to touch upon Harvard, and I know that there's this sentiment that people feel that Paris should have gotten into Harvard. And I think that realistically, because Paris is a legacy that generations of her family have gone to Harvard and that her family has a ton of money, she probably would have gotten in. But I don't think that would make sense within the canon of the show. I do think it's important to talk about the interview process. I believe it's an opportunity to weed out the hyper intense candidate. First of all, Paris is a very volatile and intense person. And where she goes wrong is during the interview process. She really fudges that up. And it's another example where her lack of emotional control sabotages her. So during the interview, she is 
rambling. She's ranting about population control in Europe, and she's yelling at the interviewer. She's not letting the interviewer speak, and she's not letting the interviewer clarify that she's not even addressing the question that's being asked. And it's very clear that she's very panicked in the moment. She says how hot she is in the room. And I think just that interview itself demonstrates that Paris's behavior is what causes her downfall and what causes her to fail. Another example is when Paris is editor-in-chief of the Yale Daily News. Paris takes over, she's put into a position of power, but because she needs to be in control of it all the time, she creates a very toxic environment. She causes a lot of people to quit, and the quality of the newspaper suffers, so she had to be taken off. She caused her own downfall in that situation. So it is kind of funny that Paris then gets very mad at Rory for taking over, and it's kind of interesting because... This is not even Paris's dream. I, I guess it's an interesting question is, was Rory in the wrong for accepting the editor-in-chief position? Considering the fact that Rory's dream for a very long time has been to become a journalist. So being in that role is important for her future. She needs it. Whereas for Paris, she wants to be a doctor or a lawyer. This is something that she's doing just because she's interested in it. She doesn't need that position. And she was forced off of that position because of her own actions. Finally, there's another characteristic that I thought was kind of disturbing about Paris. And there's only a few examples of this, but it's something I noticed and maybe I'm reading too much into it. But I thought it was, I don't know, a little unusual is that Paris sometimes spins her own narrative. And it's not clear if she's lying or if she's deceiving herself. One example is when Headmaster Charleston calls Paris and Rory into his office. Rory says, I'd never wanted this stupid job in the first place. Who forced you to take it then? You did, because you didn't think you'd get elected unless I ran with you. That's not true. It's I don't want to be vice president. Oh, come on. Every little girl wants to be vice president. Not this one. But you have to. It's the only way. Please, I'm begging you. Another interesting example is when Paris is voted off from her position as editor-in-chief. Paris comes out and she gives a resignation speech, even though she's not resigning, she was forcibly removed. But in that moment, it feels like she's created this narrative in her mind that she's resigning off the position, even though she was just told that she was fired. And part of this is also the moment where Rory takes over and she makes sure that the paper gets published. It gets very frantic. Rory starts delegating. Everybody bands together. And at the very last minute, they finally get the issue published. And then Paris comes out and she says, yes, guys, we did it. Even though she really didn't take part in that at all. She was in her bunker the whole time, but she is then associating herself with the group and associating herself with the progress that was made by the group, even though she wasn't really part of it. And then one more example is when Paris makes Rory sign a lease. So in season seven, Rory moves back in with Paris into her apartment and Paris says, hey, you have to sign the lease. Rory asks why. And Paris says, well, you are subletting from me and the last time you lived here, you just up and left in the middle of the year. It's interesting that Paris had the confidence and the gall to literally say, you moved out in the middle of the year without any notice, even though Paris is the one that kicked her out. In conclusion, Paris is a very interesting character. I feel bad for Paris, but I don't want to be Paris. And I think most of us can acknowledge the fact that while you may like Paris, it's not someone who you would be, I guess, comfortable with in real life. She's very, very intense. And this is obviously not a full character analysis on Paris. Also, let me know if I should still make a video about Paris and her relationship with Rory. I have all those notes ready so I can make it. Thank you so much.